Hello, this is Gio. Hey, look what I have here. I have a basement flood. Clearly, I have an issue and I need to unclog some pipes. So this is a bit of a reoccurring issue. It happens every year or so. Uh, the pipes underneath the slab here kind of get clogged up and back up into this utility sink and overflow. And of course, it floods the basement. Fortunately, I do have some water alarms here that did warn me of this flood. And so not only did I get a sound, but I also got a notification on my phone. And so I did clean up the mess here a little bit. I just used my little shop vac here to suction up the water there and I bailed out the water in the utility sink. And I'll kind of show you what the issue has happened. So this is the pipe that leads down from the uh, kitchen, which is right above. And there's a kitchen sink there and it has uh, a garbage disposal and sometimes food gets down here, uh, comes down here into the basement and there's a pipe that leads underneath here that tends to clog up either five or 10 feet down. Now I do have a couple of clean outs. I have this older one here that is never used because it's pretty much rusted shut, but a new one was installed uh, at some date, which is right here. Now, one thing I do know from the flooding, it did back up in this utility sink and came up to about here. So I know the water in the pipe didn't go above this level here, probably backed up to about this level, overflowed here. And when I got this cleaned out, it is the water is probably at least to here. So right below this little clean out. So I will be opening this up. Hopefully no water will spill out if it does. I'll have to clean it up with the shop vac, but the water should be at least here. Hopefully it's lowered a little bit. Now I could start off just by using the snake I have at home. This is just a, a standard uh, like residential snake used for uh, unclogging drains, which maybe isn't that deep or substantial. But from past experience, I know that sticking this thing in that clean out and trying to unclog this, this particular clog this won't work and so if these little fixes don't work what do you do well you could always call in a plumber but what a plumber would bring in to unclog this pipe would be this little rotor rooter instrument right here uh, this one is just on wheels has a motor and it's more much more substantial than the little one I have here well a plumber can cost a lot of money and I kind of want to show you that you don't have to hire a plumber to do this work. You could pretty much rent this equipment yourself and do it yourself. And it's not that difficult. And so this little machine I actually rented from Home Depot and I have it for a four hour rental and it, it costs about 50 or 60 bucks for the four hours. So I could have done a day rental for like 70, 80 but all I really need is four hours. So uh, as long as you have room enough in your vehicle to transport this, and it's not that big, so most vehicles can handle it. And maybe uh, if you could lift this up in your vehicle and bring it down in your basement, etc., that's all you really need. If you're not strong enough or you don't really want to deal with this, yes, call a plumber, but it's a lot cheaper renting the equipment yourself and do it yourself. And I'll show you how to do this today. And so the first thing I want to do here is we'll get on my gloves here and there's this little hook here that this little spring mounted so it's going to kind of come towards my way here. So that's that little spring. I'll take the little cord out of here, unwrap this and then we'll just explain how this thing works. This is actually fairly simple. Uh, there is of course a cord that you plug in. Uh, right here is also a little foot pedal. This is basically the on and off foot pedal. You press this on once it's uh, plugged in and it will start. You remove your foot and it will stop. So right here on top of the motor, uh, you have a little switch. You have a forward switch, which is on right now, and then you have a reverse switch. Now you don't really want to use the reverse switch. Actually, the reverse switch uh, will not stay on permanently. You have to 
uh, hold it tight because you don't really want it to run in reverse except only in pulses. Now, if if uh, the little end there kind of gets stuck, that's the only time you want to reverse this thing to try to get it unstuck and only momentarily. So this is the end that will go in the pipe and will uh, start moving forward. Now this is a self-propelled uh, version. There are other different kinds of versions and it really depends on what you want to rent, the issue that's involved. Uh, there's several different sizes you can rent either at your Home Depot, Lowe's or other hardware uh, stores. So kind of like a judge it based on your needs. I like personally this larger device for this particular issue and it also has a reverse uh, actually a, a, a neutral setting, uh, forward uh, setting and a reverse setting. Now this is different than this little switch over here. Uh, in the forward direction for the switch, this little belt here will kind of just spin in one direction. When you reverse it, it'll go the opposite direction. Now this neutral forward and reverse knob here, this will continue to go in one direction even if you change this. What this does is it basically grips this kind of little uh, cable here, which you can see it has some grooves, and this if you put it in forward, it'll actually self-propel it forward. And so the end of this will move forward. Uh, in the reverse direction, it will retract back. And this will still be spinning in the same direction. It's just, it'll start retracting the cable in the reverse and in the forward direction, it'll start advancing. So I'll demonstrate this in a second, but I do also want to say that there's different kinds of heads for these things. There's a little Phillips screw right here. Uh, there's this traditional kind of spring end, which is more designed to grab objects. Let's say if you have a teddy bear stuck in your pipe, this will help grab it and get it out. Uh, the, the rental also comes with several other bits, which you can kind of see here. Um, and let's see what we have here. Like this one, I might actually use. This is more of a cutting bit and it helps clean out uh, the debris and uh, it won't really take objects out, but it'll help cut through it and push it through. I've also used this kind of cutting bit before. Uh, it's a little smaller. Uh, this one helps kind of cut through a uh, more of a mass of a plug, but uh, if this cuts through, really you're only making a hole about this wide and you can retract it and you could le uh, leave a lot of, let's say, oil or debris in place. You might get some flow through, but a good portion of the pipe could still be plugged and eventually it might clog up. So, But I've used this very effectively in the past, but I think I'll try this head this time. It's a little wider and I think it'll do the trick. There's also a few other cutting heads kind of designed for roots and such that actually cut, let's say, uh, uh, probably just roots or, or something like that, more cutting heads. But these are typically the more traditional uh, heads, including the little spring one to grab objects. Okay, so to just replace this head with this head, it's just a Phillips screw here. I might want to I want to use my gloves here to hold on to this. And you just loosen here until this comes off. Like that. And then you replace this one just like that. And tight, and that's all there is. And so we'll use this head. Okay, before we unclog the actual pipe, I'll demonstrate how this works. Again, I'm gonna just stick this in the forward direction. Again, you don't typically wanna run it in reverse. Again, you have to hold it in place for reverse. But in my case, just forward direction. Take the little foot pedal here. I'll just put it right there for now. And you can see when I put my foot on it, it is plugged in. It starts moving. So to pro propel the cutting bit forward, you just put it, this in forward direction. You could tighten this a little tight if it's not really moving. 
uh, I would probably tighten it all the way and then back it off maybe half a turn to a turn uh, just so this will grip there. Uh, you may have to readjust this to make sure that it's gripped properly. You don't want it too tight or too loose. But so we'll go ahead and try it in forward direction. And you can see it's moving forward. Okay, let's go ahead and reverse it. So this is reverse direction. Hit it again. And it's reversing. Okay, so I'm just gonna feed this thing down this clean out. Uh, again, from experience, I know it's either five or 10 feet, the clog is five or 10 feet back. Uh, the utility sink is all the way drained, so I'm hoping that the water is no higher than about here. But uh, I am a little bit prepared for a little bit of water coming out. And I have my shop vac ready. I'm just taking a wrench here, and I'm just gonna, easily remove this. Now, if you have cast iron pipes like the clean out below, this might be actually the most difficult part. Uh, you have to be careful uh, opening up clean outs for really old pipes. You could actually break the pipe. So if you don't feel comfortable removing these clean outs, uh, you may want to call a plumber. So let's just do this carefully and see what happens. All right, nothing's coming out. Let's take my flashlight. It's like I could see a little garbage there, but I don't see any water. So it must have drained a bit. So at least that's good. No water's flooding out. So I'm gonna position this machine. So the spring right here is pretty close to the clean out and at a decent angle so I can get this head in there. like that so you you don't want uh, the cable to be you know when this starts running you don't want it to be out of control so you want to try to get this spring kind of in the pipe as best you can okay so I verify this is on I verify this is in the forward direction like that I have my foot pedal right here and then I'm gonna kind of get close here so I can kind of control this. Again, my foot pedal's right there. Uh, if you don't hold this in place, it could kick out. So just be aware of that. So hold it tight, press the thing. And it's starting to move forward. Now before I continue, I just wanna show that the clean out is pointing in this direction. Now if this was pointing upward, it would be very difficult for this thing to kind of turn that corner. So usually the clean outs are pointing in the typical direction of the clog. This little joint here, this little, uh, this actually kind of curves downwards. So usually these are, the plumbing is constructed so it drains and curves in the direction of the drainage. So uh, there is a possibility that this cable might come up this pipe but because of this curvature, most likely it'll just go straight down. So we'll just continue. Now as you go there, if it gets kind of stuck up, you wanna be aware of that. Uh, you might see some binding of the cable itself here. In that case, you'll either wanna reverse a little bit or even hit the reverse switch to try to get through that. Uh, but also pay attention to what this cable here looks like if it's starting to crimp and stuff, you want to uh, stop, reverse for a while, and see if you can uh, solve that blockage. Okay, so I used most of the cable. I'm pretty far, I'm pretty sure I am past the clog. So at this point, I'm just gonna uh, re redo this to reverse. And now it will bring back all the cable. Looks like the head's coming up here. So I think the head is just 
below this top here. Let's see if I can bring it up. And there it is. There's the head. Not much, not much garbage, but what I, what I do want to do is before I return this, I'm going to kind of hose out the the uh, cable in the little spool there, just kind of clean up any um, large debris. Okay, so now I've retracted the cable, and so next I just want to see if the clog is removed. Okay, so I'm just gonna take the little cap here, and for right now I'm just kind of loosely gonna close this up just so it doesn't spurt out any water. I'll tighten this up after I've tested this. And I'll take my utility sink. If you don't have a utility sink, you can go ahead, go to a kitchen or what have you and start running water. And there you go. Looks like the pipe is unclogged. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit that like button at the bottom of the screen, and even consider subscribing to my channel. I have many more videos to come. And so the next time you get a clog, instead of calling the plumber, consider renting the equipment yourself. It might save you a lot of money. Bye-bye.